Hello and welcome to the Troy and Hurling Show with me, Michael Verney. Delighted to be joined once again by the dream team of Eddie Brennan and John Milan. And I'm wondering, Ned, after reading your Irish Independent column this morning, have you woken up from the slumber that you had on Saturday afternoon during Cork and Dublin? <laughs> yeah. Um, just, ah, look, it was just, it, just, do you know the way you you matches just hook you in and you just go, oh, geez, I can't, you, like, you'd burn the dinner rather than come away from the match. But it just, it just never ignited. And it, do you know the way, even an average match or a poor enough match gets you kind of drawn in this owl, there's an owl incident or two. Jeez, it was, it was awful. Like, and I just, I don't know what, what way it was. Was it down to the tactics? Was it down to the, you know the way sometimes you see these matches where you mightn't really go win it early, but you don't want to lose ground. It was like as if they were just, you know, you score, I score. And then, like, strangely enough, when Dublin actually took off the shackles with, with time nearly gone, they actually made a great fist of it. And it was just a shame, like, Old O'Donnell went up the field on a few runs and start making things happen. And, you know, you take out Donald Burke, you know, he's after having a couple of fierce bad days on the freeze. And if you throw that into the mix and he gets that right, Jesus... It very easily it could have been and you'd expect Cork would have reacted but I don't know it was just it was definitely one of the poorest knockout championship matches I've witnessed in a long time Mull have you ever seen the like of it like it was, it was a really really strange feel for a quarter final where teams are playing for their lives the carrot is so big getting back to Crow Park in the last four and it just it never ignited at all I couldn't believe how loose it was as well it was like an exhibition game or something we've all played in the opening of pitches and different things like that where it's a lot looser it's just a different feel to it it was a very very strange feel uh, to a game that had so much on the line yeah it kind of reminded me of the watching the Scotland Hungary game last night where Jesus you, you, you nearly like to, to pull these pull, pull the 30 players together and say well hold on a minute lads this one at stake and even last night's game both Scotland and Hungary you know like to say to him Bo Manage saying geez do you realise you know the, the significance of, of not winning not winning this match that you know you're not you're not going to qualify and had a bit of that feel to it there but Eddie was 100% right I had a bit of that feel to it as well Saturday and I suppose look throw in the, the time as well quarter past one I'm yet to come across a game where as early throwing as that where I've seen a very, very good game and, you know, you've got to take it into consideration then that the logistics of probably planning for a quarter past one throwing, I think some of their lads, some of the lads Saturday, Saturday, that their, their heads were still nearly on the, on the pillow. Like, and that, yeah. that's what it looked, that's what it looked like to me. Like, and as Eddie touched on, there's only the realisation then with what, 10, 15 minutes to go that the dubs decided, you know what, we're going to, we're going to throw off the shackles and, and and have a right go and you know if 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 they got a would have got a goal at the at the end of 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 that closing stage of that match it would have made it very very interesting but I look Cork were possibly always in, in in control of that match and you just felt that Cork possibly had you know if 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 it was called upon that they could go into another gear and they could hit hit another gear and. But that's a hard thing to do in a championship match, yeah, Muller. Yeah, yeah, but I suppose, look, you know, when you're in control, the only one thing I would worry about would, would have from a Cork point of view, if that was Kilkenny or if that was Limerick and they were after going seven, eight, nine points up, they would then be looking to go 11, 12, let's push it out to 13, 14. Yeah. And then, you know, it's it's up to the other team then to, to, to throw in the towel, but... Again, lads, I go back to it. That's 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 quark, that's cork though. Like, you know, and what we've seen yeah. it, you know, like and in the aftermath of the match, everyone's saying, Oh, geez, if, if Cork play like that against uh against Limerick, they've 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 no chance they're gonna be they're gonna be beaten out, out of the gate. I, I agree, I, I agreed to 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 some extent, but I, I'm looking at Cork. This Cork group, lads, they're a funny, funny group. Like look how look how awful they were against Water. All right. And was it six days or seven days later? No, was it no two weeks later then? They rock up then against Limerick and they give that level of performance. So you can't rule out that two weeks' time this car team can get back up to those levels again because 
they've done it. They've done it in the past. They've done it this year. And what's to say that they can't get back up to those levels again? And, and they can. Because the reason why they can get back up to those levels is because they have the players. And on any given day, these players, when they flick that switch, you know, they can they can go and match it with go and mix it and match it with anyone, and even including Limerick in that. But look from from a car point of view, Pat it's Ryan, done. he'll be delighted. They got the job done. They're back in the semi final, and I suppose the last two three the last two weekends were always going to be difficult. You know, expectation levels were that you know to go out against Offaly, they were expected to win by fifteen plus points. The weekend they were expected to win by anything over eight points and at stages of that match you know they were in total control and but from a Dublin point of view the most disappointing thing you know they, they had the opportunities in the first half their free taking duties were, were, were off scratch with, with, with Donald Burke which is, which is very unlike him I think someone touched on the after that they've had four, 43 scoring opportunities so if their scoring efficiency would, would, have, would, would have improved or, or you know was was up around even, you know, fifty or even sixty percent of 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 those forty three scoring opportunities, they would have been right there in the end of that match. Yeah, I think Dublin missed a bit of a trick, lads, because um, Cork were. Uh, you could say Cork had Dublin at arm's length and they were playing within themselves, but Dublin missed a bag of chances. Like Sean Curry went in the freeze. I don't think he missed the free. Donald Burke was off target before that. Um, you know, had they nailed what they should have nailed, I think they would have been right in it. Now, just from a Cork perspective, how worried would you be from their perspective about the peaks and the troughs? Like they, they've hit this peak of, you know, the Limerick performance, the tip performance. They've hit the, a couple of lows maybe the last two days. How difficult is it to get it back up again? I know, listen, the carrot is as big as it needs to be. You're, you're going to stop a five in a row and stop a team that's, you know, inflicted a fair amount of pain on, your, on yourself as well. But how difficult is it to turn it on? I know they have two weeks, but that's a difficult thing to do. Yeah, it is, and and I suppose it's it's trying to bring ultimately what you crave from a group or any management wants is just consistency of application. That that every day they bring the fire, every day they bring the attitude. Like and and I know, like as John said, there there's a lot of old bits and pieces going on. You know the times and all that. Uh, it can often lead it to it, but I suppose look. <laughs> If you're Pat Ryan, you know, you're you're looking to to, to obviously take out the All Ireland champions now, but you're also looking at yourself and saying, listen, the you know, we've been starved of success down in Cork in terms of senior All Irelands now. And you just I think your your body language and all that makes big statements. And that's probably the concern is that yeah, we can we can, you know, we can fucking churn it around or kick it around and say, yeah, maybe Cork had another gear in him. But I don't. I don't know. I. I. If if I'm in Pat Ryan's shoes, I want to see that every day. You. You know. And and he obviously sees the boys in the dressing room. He knows where they're at. But I just. You know. You'd be worried because John Muller's touched on it there last week about what you know. You you can trust Kilkenny and Limerick because they bring fire every day. They're you know they're going to give it their all. And I suppose that's one thing that has let this Cork team down over the years is that they seem to struggle to bring that consistency of application day after day, you know, that you're going to get war. And you go back to look the last team, the last Cork team that won it like the the O O two, O three, O four, O five crew that myself and John would have faced. Jesus, they brought fire nearly every day, you know, and 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 that's what it takes, I think, to be All Ireland champions. Now, look, if they get over the line, and they beat Limerick, which is another, you know, it's 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 an Everest for them. You know, strangely enough, it's not finished till they finish the job off. Like it, it, that's not worth, you know, it's not worth a damn really unless they can go along and win the All Ireland. So I suppose for Pat Ryan, that's what he wants to see. And yeah, you'd expect their. You'd expect now, you know, Monday morning, their energy levels, their, you know, the ears are pricked up now and you're going, right, here we go now. This is war coming and there's a huge prize on offer. But that is definitely the worry because that's all you want off your guys day in, day out. And I just would have expected, you know, not to take the gloss off the awfully thing, but that's two days now they haven't really, you know, got their mojo going. And if they were like to roll in with confidence, you'd expect... Jesus, they should have been getting that from get go. Let's let's get this business done here now, rather than the panic stations that kind of 
you know, if a ball flies into the net there in the last couple of minutes there, there was a bit of prodding and digging going on and a few little bits and pieces. You know, if that happens, now suddenly, you know, you have a different scenario and you could have, you know, it's like I said there, if, if Dublin had to come a bit earlier, they could have definitely pulled the rug from underneath Cork. So it's a big worry going in because from a supporter's point of view, you know they're capable of it. We all know what's the potential in this Cork team. But it comes down to, you know, what Cork is going to turn up in the All-Irelands. Yes, they'll turn up, I, I'd imagine. They're not going to not. But it's what level of performance are they going to bring? You know, are they going to bring enough throughout the game to take out Limerick? And and that and that's what we'll all have to wait and see. You know, we can speculate. You look at the talent that's there and it's just down to what's between their ears now and how badly they really, really want to get to an All-Ireland final. You definitely wonder, like uh, Alan Alan Connolly is a case study of a, a fellow who's scored three hat tricks this year, and he hasn't managed to score in the last two games. He couldn't stop scoring in the Munster Championship, and I know I think Pat Ryan said he had a bit of an illness last weekend or whatever. But that is a bit of a worry, and I would worry again. I'm a, probably a bit of a doubt in Thomas no more than yourself, Ned. Until they go and win the All Ireland, I think when they go and win the All Ireland, they could go and win a couple. But until like maybe Limerick in 18 until they actually go and do it um, I'll be a believer then uh, just but, net, yeah. go, yeah. on, go on Mulk but, but if you're saying he had he, Pat Ryan said he had a bit, he had a bit of an, in, an illness the last weekend the, the, the weekend just gone yeah yeah well look that with the weekend the off week game or the weekend just gone oh the weekend just gone yeah Dublin yeah, but that kind of just makes that makes a a, a, a whole lot of of sense. And what's to say, like the, the the previous week that it possibly wasn't maybe maybe coming on him coming on him that that weekend. And trust me, lads, I I, I was there before in All Ireland semi final, Quinter quarter final, uh, picked up a vomit virus back in two thousand seven, and, and and it can it can knock you now, and it can knock you, and it can sometimes take you a couple of weeks to get back up to up to the level. So. You know, I think he'll appreciate the next few weeks of, you know, trying to get back up to do, those levels. Doing river and Sandal Ball, Mullers. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's not pretty, I'll tell you. Yeah, but, um, you know, va- you know, vomiting and diarrhea, whatever, you know, it's... it's uh, So, if he's out, if, he, if you're telling me he, he's, he, he came down with some sort of a virus or something, you know... You can understand that them, has a huge impact. You can, you can understand them why his levels would, would would drop, and you know it might take him even this week to, to you know you know to come again to re-energize himself and you know to try and get back fully back a back a hundred percent. So I think we got to be a little small bit lenient lenient towards him. And look, lads, he's he's a killer. I mean, about three four weeks ago we we were saying he was a, a machine of a player. I mean. He still has that in his locker. He could rock up the next day, lads, and he could bang in two goals. He could he could bang in two goals. Like that's what they have. That's what they have. That they have players that right. They might have been below par one weekend, but all it takes is for them to rock up, get a couple of scores early doors, get the confidence levels back up, and they're, they're up and running again. Yeah. And you know, and, and I even said it last week. I even said it last week that. It might actually do this car group no harm that, you know, uh, talk down around the lease side, it's starting to dilute, you know, expectation levels have started to dilute. Now, all of a sudden, instead of everyone talking car up saying they're going to be Limerick, they're going to be Limerick, everyone now is all of a sudden saying car have no chance against Limerick. So that actually might suit this this car group going yeah. into going into this match against Limerick. And lads, I said it even last Saturday. This group are at their best when they're being written off and nobody's expecting anything out of them or nobody's giving them a chance. So I wouldn't be writing them off yet. Absolutely not. Yeah, no, All you wouldn't be either. I suppose it, we're just talking about the consistency side of it. But it's probably now, it's probably a, a better way to be approaching it rather than two 10, 12 point victories. Do you know, it, it, it might just put it in a different perspective. So as you said, it might dampen down the, 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 the loose talk. Ned, what's the, just seeing as we're talking about sickness and that, what's the worst shape you ever played a match in from illness or whatever? I can tell you, I had a chest, oh, I, had, I, I had a chest infection a week out, like a, a mother and father of a chest infection a week out from a Leinster College's final. But it actually worked out all right because our, our, my doctor is, has an old sports mind to him. So I ended up on the good stuff and I felt like a million dollars for, <laughs> I felt a million dollars for the match though, I have to say. Um, but what's the, uh, what's the worst condition you ever played a game in or the worst illness you ever brought into a game? 
Oh, I tell you, I went down years ago. One of the air, the first times I played in Cork in Parky Cueve, uh, we were playing a league match. I think it was two thousand and three, uh, and oh Jesus, I went out for dinner the night before, and he ended up eating. I ended up eating lamb's liver or something like that. And I'm not messing. I absolutely sickened myself beyond anything I ever imagined. And I usually, I, I consider myself to have a, a stomach like a cement mixer. And oh, I, I got up the next morning. I didn't sleep at all. I remember going over the field across from me. Uh, who was it? Liam, Liam Keown there, just from Tullerone, me, neighbours of ours. Lost his father. Yeah. I remember going over to yeah. the crush over at his field and puking the whole lot up. And I remember even going down on the bus. It was horrible. I was I was pasty and green the whole way down. And I was nearly, you know, asking Cody not to play me. He says, your grand's tight. Sort him out there. And he just said, keep drinking water. There was no magic injection. I wish there was, but uh, it was absolutely horrible. And I remember I kind of got going and played out the first half. And then I just, just faded. Just, well, it's, yeah, it's horrible. Yeah, and another yeah. time in an episode with working nights, and trying to play a match and you just can't. Um, no. It's just much and all as you want to and you don't want to show weakness, you go, okay, I'll play. You're just yeah. doing yourself harm. There's another time it works out, but by and large, if you're flushed out like that, oh, yeah. it's horrible. You'll, you'll get away with it at a club level, lads. You'll get away with it at a club level. And even the one fellow who gave me the bit of advice was, was, was Tony Brown. I remember Tony won horror year in 1998. And he, he was getting, I remember he'd done his, his ankle in in 99 and he got, he was getting injections even to take to the field. And I remember he made him out Mickey. Mickey O'Connell was making his debut. And Collar up. O'Connell, yeah. Mickey O'Connell hit for six points. And I remember after that, it was Brown, Brown always, Brown always, his voice was, if you're not 100% right, don't, uh, don't ever take to the field playing an inter-county match. Because the lads up in the stand, when you cross so, those yeah. white lines, the lads in the stand don't know you're sick or they don't know you're after being ill. So when you cross those white lines, you know. You're good to go. You're good to go. They're looking down. You're fair. You're fair game as well, Mull. Like once you cross the white lines, you're fair game. And lads would yeah. slate you. They don't know what you're going through. That's 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 exactly that's exactly. I never I never forget two thousand and the seven yeah, and, and I caught that vomit virus, and uh, we were due to play Cork in the replay, and I remember I got off the train. I felt down well coming down it down from the from the first game and I said jeez I'm going to get I'm going to get sick here I'm going to get sick and I thought it was it was a real warm day the, the same day and I, and I was putting it down to that I was dehydrated and I, I said to myself I was getting collected off the, the train and I said to myself I said I said I'm going to get sick so I got off the train and started getting sick all over outside the outside the train all that all that night started getting sick all Monday started getting sick Tuesday started getting sick when they were due to play Cork in the replay well Halpine was man of the match that's the, 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 the in the first game and I didn't go training on the the Tuesday and into Wednesday getting sick and I remember going to training on the Thursday and Justin calls me over and he goes <laughs> uh, what about a Halpine you know <laughs> What about Alpine? And I'm kind of looking at him as if to say, now, now if I was fully fit, and I remember him saying to me, I think you're the guy to, to go out now and, and, and uh, you know, that could cause a, Sean Og a bit of bother, you know, because he, he was man of the match the last, the last day. And I was looking at him, I was saying to my own mind, they're saying, right, you know, I should be nearly telling him I'm, I'm, I'm not fit to play. And I just nodded my head and said, right, yeah, I, I, no problem, I'll do that. <laughs> and I remember, lads, I'll never forget it. We were playing Parcelli even said it before the ball was thrown in. I remember that they went to shoulder of Alpino and said, I'm going to try and upset him. Very <laughs> and I'd say I was after losing about a stone in waves from not eating and getting sick the, the, all that week in the build up to it. And I remember I hit him and I'm not lying to lads. It was like hitting a brick wall, came back and I went to the game and he was like, Come on, come on, come, come on, John, come on. And I remember looking at him to go a third time and I just said, Nah, you're, you're all right. <laughs> her said it was the funniest she said it was the, she was looking down the whole side she said it was the funniest thing she ever seen but I was ripped off I was ripped off the same the same day uh, in the second half even even and you're even talking about Alan Conley like he's probably taking that into this week so he might be ready until the following week I remember even taking it into the week the, we were out the following week third week in a row then against Limerick and I just I was just 
devoid of energy. Oh, I was just off. energy is felt shit within myself, felt really weak. And again, I ended up taking the field against Limerick. And again, I was I was taken off. So yeah, what you 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 might you get away with it at a club level, but most certainly if you're no, sick, but that's injured, where even two months the, the, like you're at Inter County and you're gonna play in championship, you can forget it. You need your doc very much finger on the pulse there to just because sometimes you have to take that decision out of your hands and say listen lads with the way he's been the last weeks no he's nowhere near it he might want to and you might want him to but you know when if you if you were to sit down afterwards and write down document the whole week you were after putting down sure Jesus you'd be going no way lads we can't put that man on the pitch he's just not going to be able to go it's not going to be in the tank with the best will in the world because Eddie 90% of players will just want to play and they'll just agree yeah. they'll just agree sometimes as I say yeah as you say it probably does need to be taken out of your hand hands uh, just on the other quarter final lads like we're talking about maybe some players that are out of form one player that is in outrageous form is Shane O'Donnell, Eddie? Like it seems like uh, it seems like you can play the ball into him anyway. He's just playing with an unbelievable swagger and confidence. Like he's he's in a hurler of the year form at the minute. Ah, uh, he's just absolutely. It's uh, like, and if you go back even to the Munster final when Clare weren't at their best, you still look at the first twenty minutes there when Clare were in that match and they were firing ball into him. He was winning ball. He was getting fouled. He was scoring. You know, so it's it's very much give him the ball, like, and he's just like he must be a joy to coach because for a fellow that's not massively physically imposing, like in the likes of your Duggan or your Shanahers kind of type build, he's just so game for for physicality. Like he he doesn't shy back from anything, like, and he's brave. Like, remember there a few years ago, they went down to play Kilkenny in Nolan Park and he ran into the butt of Owen Oh, Murphy. he got, he got it, was, it was a relegation. Um, It was a relegation. Yeah, that was it. He got an awful And, and snap, you can yeah. see the hurl going in here and, and mushing his nose. And like, he went in, I don't know, did he go in and get a goal? But that was what the punishment, I suppose the point to make and it just, he's just a dream. If you have a guy like him, you can play him anywhere. You know he's going to go into the trenches for you. And then, and then on top of all of that, you have the speed, the agility, the finishing. Uh, he's just absolutely red hot at the moment. And I thought Evans was just brilliant out of, you know, player through that curveball at Wexford the other day. Just suddenly, oh, oh, Shane O'Donnell has gone centre forward. What's he going to do? He's going to move around and not play really around that area. He's going to try to pick up ball. And suddenly now Damien Reck is left with a little bit of a dilemma. So... Ah, look, it, it, do you know what? It, it's it's fair to say, I know we're saying things like that and you just don't know what's going to happen, but he does look to be fairly nailed on for an all-star at this stage. So the question is going to be is, like, with the way some of the Limerick boys are playing and one or two of the Kenny lads, uh, you know, there's Cork lads coming. In, there's going to be some scrap for the all-star team this year and let alone then the hurler of the year, like, because there's so many lads right in the mix. Like, you could name off 10 or 12 lads that are really in red hot form at the moment, and and he's just class. Like he's just brilliant to watch because uh, he 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 loves to be the feeder as well. He has no problem being the assist king if you want him to be that. Mull, what about him giving Mark Fanning the eyes for the goal? But geez, yeah, it's an unbelievable finish. Well, look, you can you can you can question the amount of steps he took. But the only thing I'd say about that is is that he was been fouled for about he six, was being fouled. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think there's an unwritten rule for referees. I think that if someone's fouling you, they get they're like at, it's like plus four, plus five to what you're normally allowed. Now he might still been over, but it was some goal. But but not alone that he, he wasn't able to catch the ball. Like he like he he, he, yeah. he wasn't he didn't have the ball in hand. He was doing it with the ball on the hurley. He gave the eyes and then he finished. That's an incredibly difficult thing to do. Like I mean, really, really you you, you scored many goals in the in the past. Great goals, Eddie. Myself, not not probably possibly as much, but that's a difficult, difficult skill yeah. to, to to be able to go and perfect that. You're not able to catch the ball again. You don't have the ball in the hand. You're giving the eyes to the goalkeeper and, and turn it putting, back. And then you're turning back. You're putting the other. You're putting in the opposite corner, and the keeper is just looking as if say, "Oh, geez, what what can I do here?" Well, isn't that more? Isn't that just a sign of a lad that is in? So free in his own mind, and he just like he will like it's it's pure instinct, like, and it's a dream when a lad is playing on instinct like that. Oh, 100%. it's so difficult to perfect, but 
he just seems to be enjoying the game and, and whatever it is, lads, the, the timing of him coming back every year seems to be just perfect with him. And and I actually think the timing of Kelly coming back into the into into the into the fold, the timing of Mac, McInerney, and what might play out in, in Clare's favour going into this all Ireland semi final is that some of the elder elder boys now are, are nearly fresh coming yeah. co- coming into coming in, coming into a semi final, which which is going to be going to be perfect for for Clare and Brian Lone. Also, as well, it it, it also offers a, a totally different dynamic for for Clare, and it, it throws the question now back to Derek Lynn. What are you now going to do with Shane O'Donnell at number eleven? So, are they going to leave Paddy Deegan with him? I think he, he Paddy Deegan he, he would give Paddy Deegan an awful lot of difficulty out there at, at number 11. So now, Derek Ling is going to be scratching his head. Do I put Mikey Butler out in them like, like they did it with, with Donald Burke? Or do they put Mikey Butler out, out, out midfield? I think if I was Derek Ling, I would be I would be putting Mikey Butler on on Shane O'Donnell. And I would be, I, if Kelly's running the midfield, I think I would leave Kelly and possibly put someone like Mikey Carey on Kelly, I think that. But I suppose that it, Muller, what you're describing there, that's a, it's a good point, and it's really relevant now because it you you have to ponder these, you have to think these situations through. But I suppose the 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 the, the, the trade off you're going to have now is, are you taking out like Paddy Deegan likes to hurl, he 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 likes to influence the match, like so your centre back, like you'll take your Hannans, your John Collins, yeah. They go there, they mark someone. Generally, you want them kind of mind in the middle. So as regards then, like if O'Donnell stays there and they clear go a kind of a traditional six as such, and you have maybe Mikey Butler centre back dealing with him, like it's a tricky one because I know Mikey Butler is well into hurl, but his predominant job there is to shut him down. Yeah, so yeah, who but then comes in and Pat, helps? So he's probably looking at a midfielder, maybe Carey coming back, but I just that's the Eddie, trade-off. Personally, Eddie, I, I think I can't don't now I think Paddy Deegan's a great player, but I don't think he's the don't think he's the match for uh for that, O'Donnell. That, but that's my point. He's too much of a hurler. He wants too to much go of a and hurler. play the match, yeah. You know, and you know, he he'll be more focused on hitting 15, 16 balls or getting on as as, yeah. as many balls as possible. But Jed O'Donnell then could could hit him for one three or or he could be the reason why Claire have to score in one six one seven. But I don't think I think Derek Ling will kind of weigh up that. And I think and look, Paddy Deegan's so versatile. I know that you could put him back into the corner. You could actually put Paddy 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 Deegan midfield. Um, but then again, and this Derek Ling has done this in the past where you know it's 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 unexpected. So like like Claire on the weekend with with. Uh, Put no on and send it forward. Where Brian Lowen are probably going to be planning for Mikey Butler going into midfield on, on Kelly. And have no doubt, like Brian Lowen and the Clare manager, they're going to take the learnings from the last two years and saying, well, well, why didn't it, why didn't we make the most of, of, of Mikey Butler going in on, on, on Kelly? And I even I, I even go back to it, I even said last year, why didn't they even put Kelly, put Kelly back uh, centre back centre back at times? And you even go back to go back to last week's game, weekend's game where Connor Cleary followed Lee Chin yeah. out, out the midfield, and John Conlon went back full back and 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 sat was nearly effectively playing, playing full back. And when Wexford went down to fourteen men, he then became the he, he became the spare man. And I think you know there's going to be so many twists and turns in in in, in the position of, of of players. And I think. You possibly now Claire might be looking at maybe possibly putting Connor Connor Cleary at, at TJ Reid, but look, that's that's for another day. We'll we'll, we'll get into all that in yeah uh, ne- next week. But going back to Claire, I think it's it's hard to judge on Claire after the weekend of where they really are are, are at because let's be honest with our lads, uh, I mean they were in control they were in control of that match. Did they did they get a real test? They got a real test up to when 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 Rory O'Connor was 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 sent off. Would have been very very interesting, and fascinating. You know how, how that game would have played out if, if Rory O'Connor would have yeah, would have stayed, on, stayed on stayed on the pitch. But look, Clare were were in the second half. Clare were every, to do everything at, at at their ease, and 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 why were they able to do everything at their ease? Because it's so difficult. I've seen time and time again 
if you go down to 14 men in in the modern game, it's 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 going to be so much of an uphill battle for for any any opposing team. And you throw into the mix, Wexford are possibly down that best player on the day, Rory O'Connor. They'd no Liam Ryan, they'd no Dio Keeves. Yeah. And I think hence hence why that match played out the way it played out. You've brought up Rory O'Connor, Mull. Uh, Ned, I'll throw it to you. Is that is that two yellows and a red deserved, or is that where we are with the modern game and modern ref, modern refereeing? Well, I I felt the first one at that stage of the match. I mean, yeah, you can you can kind of strip it down and say it's a flying arm, but that type of tackling is going in the whole time, lads. Like, I mean, you've lads tackling with their arms, they're pulling with their hat. Like, the spare arm is working away the whole time, and you can argue does he need to tidy that up but I think at that stage of the match it's just a warning it's just a free it's just you know it's you don't need to lay down a marker I think if he comes in and cleans him or you know there's something a bit more in it or it, it ends up catching him inside the head you're on a different sphere there but it just uh, it, it's just it shouldn't have been a yellow the first one in my book no way like not not after 20 seconds like when you look at and again I go back to it like you look at I think even both Clare and Limerick matches this year, I watched both of them again there lately. Jesus, it's it's hot and heavy in the first 10 minutes. And if you wanted to apply that type of red-yellow card, you, 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 you could have dished out six of them at least in both matches because there was whipping and there was... Like, go back to that famous start of that uh, Munster final two or three years ago where there was a, a sequence of play that went on for a couple of minutes like there was borderline do you know and we want the cut and trust but I suppose not going off point too much the second one then for me I think I think like and Rory O'Connor like you'd be gutted for him because you know yourself I've, I've, I've been in that situation you know once or twice where you know oh, I can't make that second one and you, you'll, it'll eat at you for a couple of days like it'll eat at you for months even you'll say but why is that? You know, I, I didn't, I can't go in. And I suppose that's the hard part of this is that the cheap one first is after costing them, unfortunately, because, you know, the second one definitely, you just can't. When you're on a yellow, you can't do them ones. Like, you, you just can't. You have to hold, you have to measure it. You have to be cute. And even too, like, I, I'd say, like, that that's hard from, because you're after getting the advantage of McInerney going off and you now have a huge the pendulum has swung back massively in Wexford's favour there for the next 10 minutes. They have a chance to come out of the traps in the second half, whereas, you know, you just knew, I could even see the Wexford players coming out at half time. Their body language was was just a little bit down and it just was, you, you could sense in them that the inevitable was there. Yes, they'd done it before, but I just thought another point that I thought was significant to hear Lowen talk about, he gave them a week off after the Munster final. And I just thought Claire looked really energized yesterday the other day. I thought they looked really more like the Claire team. You know, they were bouncing, they were they were their tackle, they were they were on point with tackles. They they went after Wexford defenders at every opportunity. Um but yeah, they they you know that to me was a master stroke from Lowen to just keep them fresh. But it's just it's it's heartbreaking for a player because you know, you look back on the first and you go, oh, what, you know, feck it anyway, why did I, or, you know, and it just, it just and, sickens you. And you know what, Eddie, I, I, I didn't know that, I didn't know that, that he, that he gave, gave a week off, and sometimes, Jesus, that, that, like, we'd always question, you know, has Lone gotten, gotten things wrong, but I, I'd applaud him for that, because, brilliant. I mean, you, you just touched on there, that, that's, that's a master stroke, and sometimes, you know, given, a, given, given a couple of players, or, or given the, given the team, the week off, and, you know, leaving them go away and dwell on themselves and, you know, question themselves what, what they done wrong or what they need to improve on. And even go back to Limerick, you know, why why are they getting the timing right with the four weeks? You know, in the aftermath of the Munster final, what John Kiley goes off and gives Limerick, the Limerick players five or six days off. And sometimes you're not going to lose anything. If, you, if you're going to wait for a week or, you know... Some some managers go to a different approach where we've got to get back into training and and you know we'll, we'll go out of right again. But sometimes that is the answer. We're right, lads. You go away, take a week it's just off. Just reading take, the room, isn't it, and seeing take, what take, way lads are. Take a, take a five six days off, and as you just touched on, the following Tuesday, then if you're away for the week, you're saying, Jesus, what's this all about now? I'm getting a nice week off there, but you can't wait to go back into training yeah, the following yeah, week. Yeah. I think you just touched on it there, like that is a massive stroke from Lone, you know. 
There's, it can't be a bit of freshness, lads. Particularly coming off a defeat. You're hurting. You probably don't want to head into training on the Tuesday night and digest it all. I'm sure they probably did digest it together and parked it and then they got a bit of a break maybe or something like that. But you and do you know what you can do with that mixer, just quickly? Like, And again, it's one thing I, I love about, you know, the, the closest point of the sea to me is kind of tramor from at home. But for the clear lads there, like a lot of them, get out into the sea, take a few days off, just just revitalise. And even for Limerick or for Clare too, they're probably just, hey lads, Munster final, let's forget about it. Gone. Ancient history. We can't change that now. So let's get that, let's flush that out of our heads and just take a week off, eat a bit of nice food, just chill out and just, you know, go off and just re- re-energise. Jeez, it can have such an effect. I used to love back when we were going through May, there was times there where we get two club matches and you might be able to, I, I got to Spain for two weeks in 06 and 07 and it was deadly. Just, in it the just mid- where in the, the middle, in the middle of May? Yeah, back in 06, <laughs> 07, we used to have, we'd have two club matches and if you got it right, if you had one on a Friday night and the following one was maybe a Saturday or a Sunday, you snuck a week in and I, I, I just did it twice and I just found it brilliant that you can, went and I, I didn't, you know, I, I just hey, enjoyed Barry, the hey, week hey, over there. Huh? Hey, Bernie, he was able to do that in May because he didn't have to face into a tough month. <laughs> <laughs> the, cre- the creme de la creme, kid. Hey, <laughs> hey it was easy. It was easy to go out the same in May. Well, 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 by the way, we were waiting for the likes of Tipperary and Carlton facing into them in the end of May, early June. Easy to do it. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. But you'd only want boys at Muller then. <laughs> but no, it just, it, it is. It was a great idea. And I just think, Brian Lowen can be applauded for that because it's a brave thing to do, and and I and I think the the players, you know, will pay him back for that. They're like they're the little things that you go, oh, geez, that was great, and and you as you said, you come back in chomping. Then do you know what as well it does, lads, um, with wives, girlfriends, partners, yeah. etc., um, because they make a massive sacrifice as well, and they're yeah. you know it's it's gung ho during the championship. At least you're getting they're getting a little bit of a payoff out of it as well. I suppose probably. what's significant is Brian Law knows these boys. He has them five yeah. years, so he knows you know he he be able to read them boys. He should be well able to read them now, and he'll know what they need is. Uh, you know he could trust him with that yeah and so they might come re-energised again for that All-Ireland semi-final third time in a row against Kilkenny they've beaten him twice in the league this year including the league final we'll, uh, we'll preview that game a bit more next week but just from a Wexford point of view Mull I'd imagine Keith Rosser has been probably been a couple of decisions maybe this year. He referenced the, the penalty decision against Kilkenny that went against them he referenced obviously Rory O'Connor's sending off at the, at the weekend He'd be disappointed, but there were plenty of green shoots from a extra point of view. His first season got them to a quarter final. They'll probably, with the sending off, they'll probably look and say, if he wasn't sent sent off, maybe we could have got a result and they'll come in maybe chomping at the bit for next year. But all in all, like coming back down the road from Belfast, it was looking like it could be a disaster for Rossler. Like it wasn't a bad year all in all. Ah no, absolutely not. And look, I, 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 I'm delighted. We even, we even touched on you know cornerbacks last week, players that we married in the past. Jesus, he, I, I actually forgot his name. Jesus, he was right up there as a, as a top class uh, cornerback. And you know what? It's, 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 it's lovely to see that he's going in and he's, 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 uh, you know, he's put himself out there and he's saying right, I'm going, I'm going to have a go. He's, he's, he's a, he's a young manager. You know, served his time under under Davy, served his time under the went, went under the under twenty rules. He's Wexford born and bred. He's an elder, the Ballon man. You know, would do would die die for Wexford, died for Wexford on on the field. And you can just see, you know, he's he's bringing an awful lot of positivity to to Wexford this year. And uh, I think look, he couldn't ask for any more for a season. I think the biggest thing for Wexford is that they have Division One A hurling next year. They're going to get what six, seven top class. Hurling games uh, next year. They'll have three or four of them games at, at home. Uh, big, probably one biggest downfall for this this Wexford group is that they were so good in the Leinster Championship. That game up in up in Corrigan Park probably cost them a, a, a Leinster final appearance. You know, they reflect on the game against Dublin. Sh- should have beaten Dublin as well. But look, if you told Key Ross at the start of the year, you retained your Division 1 A, a status, you'd be in the all Ireland Series in the last six if you have to blood in a good few young fellas, uh, played some some nice played a nice brand of hurling this year, and 
brought a, brought a, uh, an enormous amount of excitement to the fold this year. I think he would have taken the arm and leg off him. And I think it was a very, very good first year for, for Key Ross. Yeah. He had something to build on now for 2025. And uh, yeah, I think he had a very good, good uh, decent first year. Just, just on that, Ned, like it's fair to say he's put his stamp on it already. They'd maybe been playing with a, a sweeper for a good while. There's been a bit of a transition there. They're playing more kind of straight up now. Connor Foley got loads of game time. Owen Ryan got loads of game time. Richie Foley, Keane Byrne. Like, there's lots yeah. of new names that he's kind of... He's brought some... Yeah, he's building his own team, isn't he? Because he has to... Because Matt O'Hanlon's of an age. Lee Chin is of an age. Dio Keefe is of an age. Lee McG- McGovern's of an age. There's going to be a bit of a transition in the next couple of years and it looks like he's kind of starting that or getting the a new team ready, shall we say. Ah, yeah, well, look, he, he's probably best placed having been with the 20s for two seasons there. Um, he's best placed to, to to know what talent is in the county and... Ah, look, he's a good lad. Look, I've I've met him once or twice, and and as John said, you you, you cross swords with him on the pitch. You knew he was around, you know, a real good hurler. Uh, and and I think even he he like you said there, Mick, he's putting his stamp on that team. He's 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 finding a little bit of balance on it. He's 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 blending them into what he sees as the way to play. He wants this Wexford team to play, but just on a couple of them there, like for me, uh, Foley at full back, what a find he has been. He is after having some season. Like, absolutely top quality. Uh, playing a three. I seen him in action the day it was in the league against Kilkenny. And geez, he's well able to boss the square. And equally then, able to go off out the fields and pick off his few scores. Uh, Keen Bourne in the corner. Geez, real, real little live wire. So I think it's a brilliant four season for Keith Roster. Like Muller, I echo that. Very, very unlucky to, to not be in that Leinster final. Um, but you know the the episode in Corrigan Park. You know, I think that was a real test of his character, and I thought he responded so well. And that's a huge plus for him going forward. That you know they were on the brink of adversity there, given where Wexford were last season. Like that, it'd been fair to say that was, you know, would have spooked him in the background. But geez, he he dealt with it well, and they responded fierce well because there was serious pressure on them for that Galway match, and they delivered with you know again. Uh, with, with with a man down, boys. There's four teams left. The semi finals are fixed. It's Clare and Kilkenny at <laughs> the not so great time of three o'clock on Saturday afternoon, which I can't get my head around. Um, oh my God, it's it's mad. And then you have which could be a sellout. I'd say. Uh, Limerick and Cork at four o'clock on the Sunday, also in Crow Park. I'll throw it over to you, Mull. Rank your top four at the minute oh. of, the, oh. of, of the four that are left. Give me one, two, three, four. You can do it in reverse order if you want. You can keep us in suspense, whatever way you see fit. Limerick, one, Kilkenny, two, Clare, three, Cork, four. And go back, go back to it. The reason I have Limerick and Kilkenny at one and two, it goes back to trust. And we said it last week. Say it again. Oh, There's one short thing. The two of them are going to rock up on all Ireland semi final day, and they're going to bring it. I think it's just the case now, just seeing what both Cork and Clare are, are they going to match what Limerick and Kilkenny are going to do. But, you know, there's one short thing. That's why I have them at one, one and two. It's the trust of knowing that they are going to bring it on other in the semi-final. Well, Ned, what are we looking at? Cork one, Kilkenny two, Limerick three, Clare four. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I should look. Have we la- have we did a lot of numbers for Friday night as well while we're at it here? Um, look, you, it, they're two they're two great matches in prospect. I think if you had to have said at the start of the season they were the two semi finalists, you know you're going to get especially with what happened then below in Parky Cueve that has really set up the the Limerick Cork one, but the Kilkenny Clare one now that that that's a real interesting game now because you know it it it's possibly you know. Are Clare going to be beaten three years in in a row in the semi final, or can they get over that? So that that could change. But I wouldn't agree, disagree with with Mullers. I, I I think very very simple. Uh, when it comes to this stage of the year, you know what you're going to get with both the the provincial champions. It's all about now. You know, can the other two teams get over them? Can they beat them? Because they're going to have to bring the performance of performances to get to this All Ireland final, and. Uh, 
I think we have two Mount Water games in, in, in store. But just on the, on the time, Mick, I, like it's just, it's mad stuff in a way. And I know you hate this constant kind of grumbling and giving out, like, but our prime time, like our All Ireland semi final being shoved to three o'clock on a Saturday. You know, and I, I understand that I and again it stands to be correct on this, but like it's it's down to the, the, the soccer matches being on and and RTE telling the GA it's three PM on Saturday, lads, and that's the only slot we have available for you. Or like I know from a commercial point of view, it's something that they have tried to do or has been voiced before, is that there's not crowds of people coming in and you know, cutting in on Dublin on a Saturday afternoon, which is just carnage all roads. So, you know, even a small thing, right? The Liz Downey Sevens is a real prestigious, it's a good seven-a-side competition run every year in Kilkenny. And a lot of teams from outside the counties come on both days. Like, if the, if the Kilkenny match is six o'clock on Saturday evening, that's kicking off on the Saturday morning. It's grand, probably wrapped up around one o'clock and teams will bait the road and head for Dublin. Whereas now, you know, that's a headache for them as organisers. It's it's an annual event. And, and there's lots more like that. And that's where just the impact of the time is just, it's just, it's not given, it's not given hurling the oxygen. Don Logue said it there. And I, I'd have to agree with him. I think it's, 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 you know, it's, it's not we're, we're, like, these are our last, our second, the penultimate games our two All Ireland semi-finals, semi-finals. And we want to really big them up. We want them to be massive. Uh, and again, look, I just, for me personally, and I know a lot of people have their, their their views on it, I just think the split season in its current format, just it needs to be tweaked and a bit. I, I I would be very much for trying to shove back our All Ireland final by at least three weeks, and and I think that gives it a little bit more room for for a lot of things to happen. Um, that's all. But it's it's just not give. It's not doing it justice. Three o'clock on a Saturday afternoon is not doing it justice, in my view. Well, it's not often you agree with a Cork goalkeeper or a Clare goalkeeper, so he must he must be right. <laughs> uh, lads, we just fly through the the moment of the weekend. My moment of the weekend is off the beaten track a small bit. But there was much talk about the the failure down in Wexford. Our own lads Burr went down on Saturday and ended up winning the Division Two failure. It was it was unbelievable. Now just even the the pictures and scenes coming back and the boys landing back through the town at ten o'clock and the horns blowing and everything. It was uh, it was just great, Brilliant. and again, the more than the awfully twenties or the awfully minors a couple of years ago. Like I'm living two hours away from Burn out, but I have ho- massive hope that in six or seven years' time that to be a right crop there at senior level, and so that's what we who, all. Who, who, who won Division One? Uh... I actually, I actually don't know. Well, Division Two was the only Division Two is like the Leinster Championship. It was the only championship in town. I don't know. I wasn't paying any. <laughs> I wasn't paying any attention to the Division to the Division One. Be honest with you. Um, I'll find out later on, obviously. But that's my moment of the week. They beat St Anne's from Wexford in the final, and they were down a couple of their best lads even for the final as well. So. That's my moment of the week. I'll throw it to you, Ned. Your moment of the weekend. I I I was only just the the hamster was going here in my head, chinking this around because there, there wasn't too many. Um, the the final whistle at the end of the Cork and Dublin match. <laughs> now, but, Ned. Now I will I give know, fair, it, just just in case just in case we just just in case we. Just, just just case we Robin Muller here. I think Shane O'Donnell's goal. Just the endeavor, like when you look at where he came from. You know, there was no such thing as he was going to stop and get the free which he had. And just like you said there, Mull described it earlier on, that is so, so difficult to do. And then to do it when when your team needs it most, I mean, that's that's what you want from your top player. Mull? Yeah, uh, look, defeated team Dublin the weekend. It's one or two. Sean Brennan's save or Owen O'Donnell. He got two blocks in. No, he got yeah. one block in, in the first half. And the other one there where he came across and he manoeuvred his body in to kind of just, you know, out muscle, throw himself in front of Patrick Horgan. I thought that was that was amazing. So I'm going to go for for Owen O'Donnell. Those those uh two passages of play that, you know, he he prevented one goal. He actually prevented two goals. He got got the block in for one and he managed to, to shield his body out in front of Horgan to prevent another goal. So yeah, for me, 
Owen O'Donnell and, and those two passes to play that, bl- the that day, block yeah. on Horgan was absolutely outrageous because literally you're just w- waiting uh, at a nanosecond and the net is going to bulge and all of a sudden this fella gets in and the Sean Brennan save, save it, was, it, was that, it was that good that you couldn't even appreciate it in normal time it's only when you look back and it's great to have those kind of slow-mo replays it was outrageous going right into the into the top corner very like um, young Horgan save in the under 20 final from, from Adam Screeny actually with two perfect shots and two brilliant saves um, um, but that's it for a packed show this week. My thanks to Eddie Brennan and John Milan for joining me once again. We'll be back next week to preview the All-Ireland semi-finals. And in the meantime, don't forget to rate, review and follow the show on Apple, Spotify or wherever you get your podcast from. Thanks a million for listening and goodbye.